Hi everyone, welcome to the studio today. It's turning out to be a lovely day. And it's so nice to have spring springing here in Portland, Oregon. It's beautiful, um, lots of cherry blossoms, daffodils, flowers happening everywhere. So that's really, uh, really wonderful. I have a nice program planned for you today. I'm gonna to start with a little inspiration. Um, then I'm gonna talk about our light and shadow sale do a little demo for you. Um, hope hope to get something nice today. And um, that's that, that'll be it. So it'll be really fun. I'm going to start with a, a little bit from Stephen Pressfield's book, The War of Art, which is really amazing. I think I might have read this same passage in the past, but it, it is worth repeating. So this is invoking the muse. Artists have invoked the muse since time immemorial. There's great wisdom to this. There's magic to effacing our human arrogance and humbly entreating help from a source we cannot see, hear, touch, or smell. Here's the start of Homer's Odyssey, the T.E. Lawrence translation. O oh, divine poesy, goddess, daughter of Zeus, sustain me, sustain for me the song of the various minded man who after he had plundered the innermost citadel of hollowed Troy was made to stray grievously about the coasts of men and sport of their customs, good and bad, while his heart through all the seafaring ached with an agony to redeem himself and bring his company safe home, a vain hope for them, the fools. Their own witlessness cast them aside to destroy for meat, for meat the oxen of the most exalted sun, wherefore the sun god blotted out the day of their return. Make this tale live for us in all its bearings, O muse. This passage will reward, will reward closer study. The first, divine poesy. When we invoke the muse, we are calling on a force, not just from a different plane of reality, but from a holier plane. Goddess, daughter of Zeus. Not only are we invoking divine intercession, but intercession on the highest level, just one remove from the top. Sustain for me. Homer doesn't ask for brilliance or success. He just wants to keep this thing going this song. That about covers it from the brothers Car um, Karma, uh, I'm not going to get that one word, to your new venture in the plumbing supply business. I love the summation of Odyssey's trials that compromises the body of the invocation, comprises the body of the invocation. In Joseph Campbell's hero's journey in a nutshell, it's, it's Joseph Cam Campbell's hero's journey in a nutshell. As concise a synopsis of the story of every man as it gets. There's the initial crime, which we all inevitably commit, which e ejects the hero from his homebound complacency and propels him upon his wanderings. The yearning for redemption, the untiring campaign to get home, meaning back to God's grace, back to himself. I admire particularly the warning against the second crime, to destroy for meat the oxen of the most exalted son. That's the felony that calls down soul, re soul destruction, the employment of the sacred for profane means, prostitution, selling out. Lastly, the artist's wish for his work. Make this tale live for us on all its bearings, O muse. That's what we want, isn't it? More than to make it great, to make it live, not from one angle only, but from in all its bearings. Okay, we've said our prayer, we're ready to work. Now what? I love this, this book is a really amazing. Um, again, Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art, not The Art of War, The War of Art. It's an amazing book, it makes me cry <laughs> when I get it's particularly to it, towards the end of it. It's, it's a wonderful book. It's really inspiring. I highly recommend that uh, you spend some time with it. I have it here on my Kindle. 
And but I, I really wish I'm, I need to go buy a, a hard copy because I really like to just leaf through it. It's much better for me. Okay, on to our sale. We only have a few more days of our spring sale. I'm happy to offer my workshop Light and Shadow, which is really, um, it's, it's a couple years old now, I think. Um, might, might be even a little, a little older, but it's an oldie but goodie. Um, uh, just in time for spring, again, we want to paint those luminous shadows now that the sun's poking out a lot more. Um, I'm really inspired by that. Um, so this, um, this workshop really shows you just how to paint those luminous shadows. The workshop has some study in it, and now it's got six lessons because we have added a sixth uh, uh, lesson to it, making it quite, quite a hefty workshop. Um, it also has, it, you have lifetime access to this workshop if you purchase it. Um, it includes a peer sharing Facebook group that's dedicated just to this workshop. And if you have bought, if you have already bought the workshop, if you log on to the website, you'll see the new lesson. It's there automatically for you. So that's a really a good thing. So if you have purchased it in the past, go check it out. Um, you know, I really think that there's a, uh, this workshop offers a nuanced understanding of the properties of light, the direction of light, the strength of light, the, the angle of light, the color of light, and how all those things influence the moods of your paintings. And that's really, really powerful. Uh, so the, the lessons are, let's see, there's a, a canopy of trees, there's a plain air project in there, there's a figure in an interior, a copy of a masterwork, a cityscape, and this new lesson is again a, a second copy of a masterwork it's a copy where you'll be copying a Renoir painting, which he, you know, he was really known for his sympathetic paintings of women and, and a woman and child. But he did some really, really amazing landscapes as well. And that's what this one is. It's woman in the garden, this dappled light on the path. So in this lesson, you really get a chance to use that that dappled light, little dabs of color, optical mixing of the pastel strokes. So I think that it's a really powerful uh, addition to the workshop. Um, and the workshop's for all levels of student. And I just feel like it's a really, really good entree if, into pastels if you're not um, uh, currently doing a lot of pastel work because there's such a breadth of subject matter in the workshop. You know, sometimes our workshops will focus on one kind of um, theme or subject matter, but this one kind of covers a lot of different themes. So really an opportunity to find your personal, you know, kind of preferences and jam as a pastella. So I really think that it's, it's really cool. And also active subscribers that, of monthly pastel painting lessons online. And maybe you haven't gotten this workshop, you get your extra $15 discount automatically at uh, checkout. So if you're logged into the website, you'll get your, disc, your extra discount automatically. So that's, that's there too, so don't forget that. All right, so that's, that's kind of the skinny on the workshop uh, sa sale, and I, it's only for a few more days, so that's there. And that's kind of in on that. And we can get going painting today. I picked out something that's really fun and also rather challenging to do that, like that sun, sun glow through the trees. And it can be kind of tricky to paint, um, but it's also really attractive, especially when those, those, uh, the, the sun is right behind the trees and the cast shadows are coming right towards us. That's really, really cool. Now I've printed out two versions of the photo reference, one on this glossy paper and one just so I can see it larger on just plain paper. Now there's quite a color difference in the two. And so I'm looking at both and kind of, I'm gonna have to make decisions as I'm painting uh, on you know, what, where, I, where I wanna head with the color. 
And that's okay. This one has a lot more green tones in the trees. This one I see quite a lot more um, purple and blue in the trees. So I'm probably going to kind of come somewhere in between. The other thing about the photo reference, my son is kind of edging towards the, the edge of the picture plane a little bit too much. So I'm going to try to bring that over a little bit. I love the bright blue sky, so try to hold on to that. But around the sun, there's, you know, we want that sort of ethereal feel around the sun. All right, so I think I'm just going to get started painting. I'm on brown pastel mat today. I'm going to keep it, you know, fairly substantial in size because I think that that's, that'll be nice. Gives me a little bit more, you know, real estate to play in and um, get get those larger sticks in. I'm going to try to keep this one kind of um, thin and light and airy, um, as opposed to last week's piece was a lot more graphic in it, the application of pastel. So today I'm going to take a little bit different approach to that. Um, I have in mind to start out with um, my blue spruce, which I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm looking right now, I'm spending some time looking at some alternatives because that's going to be uh, harder and harder to get as we, as time goes by. But I do think I'm going to start with that and then maybe do a little bit of an alcohol wash um, to, to just give myself a nice kind of base that locks in a little bit of the, the color. All right, so let's get, get painting. Oh, and questions today. And I think it really does work out to hold questions until the end, and so we'll do that. Um, and I also just wanted to mention that um, we're going to take we're going to take a little break today after this this live stream, and we're going to be doing our super stream for our monthly pastel painting lessons people right after. And we're going to just take a little short, short break. And I mentioned that because I just wanted to uh, remind people that I do critiques during those super streams now. So we, they're, they're, it's a nice opportunity to get some feedback on your work. So. Um, as we go into year, we're in year three now of monthly, and we'll be, we're working really hard on year four and really exciting stuff coming up in year four, but we'll be continuing and even expanding on the opportunity to have your work critiqued in year four. So there's a little, little teeny pitch for year four people. And uh, Marla, really quick, yeah. um, just people can feel free to just drop their questions in the chat and I'll, I'll yes. cut and paste them. In. Yes, Kevin is going to keep track of your questions, so just drop them in the chat and we'll get to them. It's, it's kind of better that way. That way it's not um, that there's a little bit, little bit of a delay and that way, you know, they'll, it, it just kind of is more organized and I think that it works out really nice and lets me kind of concentrate a little bit more on the painting. All right. So we all set? Right. Yeah. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm also going to crop my, uh, this, I don't need all, all of this. Really the whole, the, the, the main action is right in there. So I don't, I don't need quite the same, um, I don't need. And the other thing I'm going to do, I want to make sure that I have plenty of space in the foreground. So this is a little bit short, a little small. So I want to make sure that I have um, plenty of room to, to, to get those fun shadows happening, right? Now I'm not going to be able to get these trees exactly. There's just too many of them. It's, I mean, I could if I was really spending a lot of time with this. Now my son, I want my son kind of kind of right in there. Got a plan for it. The, the, the foliage is sitting in here. And now the other thing that's 
cool about this. I want to make sure that the intervals of the trees are kind of interesting. That's what, what I think about a scene like this. They can be kind of overwhelming to paint, but they can also be really dynamic. So then I'm going to get that, that thicker tree right here. And then it, there's these kind of three runner right here. And and then it gets a little less dense right here. So I think something like that. And then just thinking about I see these. Whoop. That's what you get when you get too light of a touch. And the snow. And then there's this. It's gonna, oh, this is nice. It's a little bit. And there's snow sitting back in here. So the snow kind of, the shadow is. And then under the trees, there's lots of leaves and debris. It's a little dark. This is kind of I don't know about the alcohol wash that and kind of slow me down a little bit. I'll have to let it dry, so I'm going to not, I'm not going to do that. You know, I want to get a little bit of this gesture of these trees. There's kind of some fun things. And this is a little dense. There's one that does this. All right, so now for that kind of foliage. Now that foliage is backlit. And the shadow part of the foliage feels like it's really green in both photos, green and some brown. But before I do that, I want to get that the brighter, the yellow in. So I'm just going to come in. This is a unison. No, I'm sorry, that's not right. This is a um, Blue Earth. Now, Blue Earth is a pastel brand that of late. I've been really enjoying. There's, there, it's, I like the, the texture of them and there, there's just something about them. Okay, I wanna, I'm gonna come in and get this one taller. So, just really light getting some of this going. And this is this kind of gap right in here. And then there's, right. I think I need this one here. Yeah, that's that kind of evens that out. Now I want to leave that area 
uh, I want to leave the paper because I'm, I want, I, when I go to get that sun on there, I want it to be nice and clean and crisp there. Now for some green in here. Let's see. Might even want some mix in some brown. I know I want to mix in some brown. That's pretty good. Um, and this is a, this is also blue earth. So I, I can tell I'm kind of gravitating towards those, those, these colors and these sticks lately. It's funny how things that we like it shifts, it changes, it's good. All right, so now I'll come over back with some of this. Might also want a couple different kinds of yellows. But for now, I have a tendency or I, I want to stay as limited as I can in the palette for as long as I can so that I make really conscious choices about what the colors are that I'm adding. Um, I want to do the same thing. So this is a nice, rich brown. I'm going to bring that in here. So now that I've got that, think about the, the snow and some of those tree trunks. So the snow, I want to make sure that's, that's so looking at that value, it's pretty close. Um, I like the idea of it having, that's too, probably a little too light, um, having a mixture of blues. So this blue plus this blue, so they're just a different, couple different kinds of blue. So this one to me is leaning a little purple and this one is leaning a little green. So this one is a Terry Ludwig. It's a little harder and it is also, because of that, it's a little easier to get in here and just kind of glaze and not have it be too thick. So I'm going to start with this guy, and that's why, because I, I pick it up and I know, okay, I have a sense of what it can and cannot do. bigger section. Now there's some light hitting this area of snow here and there, 
but I'm just, because I'm staying really thin, I know that I can get my lighter value over the top of it. So I'm just, just gonna go ahead and just in a really broad fashion, get this snow in here and in between the, the tree. So even just with this, I can, our, it already has a little bit of an, a nice sense of and quality of light just with, with just this. So now, in order to get this other kind of blue in here, maybe I've got something else that's also a little harder that's that same. Not really. Okay, so in order to get that other kind of color going, let's see. It's a really super light touch. I don't want to get too thick. Super duper light touch. Just keep just adding it in here and there. All right. Okay. Bits. All right now. I'm going to want to get some of those tree trunks in, and then I can think about the sky and then get that glow happening. Now the tree trunks, I'm looking at the photo. Do I, do I let those tree trunks lean to, to a kind of aqua or purple? And, you know, because I'm seeing that it, it's, it's kind of a, they're kind of gray, but there's a lot of variety. There's a, actually a lot of color in them. So I could go in a couple different directions, which is fun. Eh. I don't know, maybe this. It might not be light enough. That might be all right. Maybe this. I could even push the intensity. So this is a per, kind of a grayed purple. I could go for something that's a little brighter than that, like, a, like this kind of thing. That's going to really give it a different kind of look. Um, I think that that that's kind of neat. This is also kind of neat. So now, now check this stick, this stroke out. Instead of going like this for these trees, I'm doing this. I'm putting it down and I'm building it because I want it to have a painterly feel and I want there to be a sense that there's foliage intervening in between the, the, the branches. Now I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. I'm gonna try this one now. That's a little bit lighter in value, that's okay. Let me get a couple more of these going. Then up here, it appears a little darker, and I may want to get that later. And there's some, some of these trees that are a little bit darker. So maybe, maybe this, this is a pretty, that's pretty neat. In a scene like this, it's super easy to kind of lose track of where you are. Um, but you can't really make a mistake here, so 
That's a little too light. This is that one that's kind of sticking up right there. Now I'm getting to the ones, this, the, the tree trunks that are near that sun. And as those rays are going across this, we, we want that to be lighter. And it might even have some different kinds of color on it. So just thinking about that. This might need to be lighter. These, these I think, need to be a little lighter. Let's see what else have I got here. Well, maybe this. That might work. Maybe mix that in. And so as I get up here, th there's some crazy stuff that goes on <laughs> in, the, in those, uh, those branches. So And then I'm going to go ahead and use my blue spruce because there's some darker branches and all kinds of stuff going on here. And then as I get up in here, there's gets darker and there's I want to get some of this in before I start up um, with the sky because I'll want to knit some of these in and around All right. That's cool. Get some of these branches going. And that's these kind of birch textures here and there. Okay. All right, enough of that for now, I think. Though I want I want this to be a little bit darker in here. Okay, so as that light hits those trees, what's it look like? It looks like there's pink in there, there's orange in there, there's all kinds of colors that are hitting th these as the those rays of light are so I'm just going to put that in there sort of to remind myself that I'm going to want that. And then there's, there's, yeah, I mean, there's crazy, crazy stuff happening. Those rays are popping around. Okay. And then as I come over here, this is these have got some rim lighting as well. And so we won't really be able to see that until we get the sky in. All right. How am I doing on time? Okay. 
let's let's go ahead and start getting that sun in. So around the sun, we want it nice and bright yellow. And then, then there's all, to me, there's also this, this sort of thing, this aqua. <laughs> it looks pretty funny right now. And then we'll get the center of this in. And then the colors here on these guys, boy, there's there's even like some orange. Like like this. It's pretty pretty crazy color. as those rays are doesn't look like much but hopefully it'll come together some of this brighter edge of the foliage. Now let's start knitting that sky in there around it and then get the sun, the light down here. So the sky needs to be dark enough to um, let that sun happen. Get those, oh wow. That's probably not the right. Let's see. Maybe this. And then crazy color. I think I need some more of those branches. I'm starting, starting to feel that effect though. It's good.
Okay, I am get, I'm kind of losing losing track of where I am here. There we go. be here. Now this blue is not exactly what I would like to see either. I would like it to be a mixture of a couple of different kinds of blues. Now, now that I've got that going, I am I want something a little bit lighter. work that sun and the rays all right now that I have that starting the starting to get that effect that light effect now once I get the in, I think it's going to kind of come together and then I can kind of pull it, pull it together a little bit more over here. You get this, let me get a little bit more sky in over here so we can start to feel what it's going to all do. I want a little bit more twinkle down here of color. Let me get this snow in. Now I want to put that snow, the light in the snow is not totally white, but pretty light. That's a, probably too, too much. This is, um, let me see. Yeah, this one. So now, Oh, this is, this is kind of the fun part. Did I get that twinkle? I have to step in front of the camera. <laughs> Sorry.
That's kind of awesome. As I come over here, I'm going to switch to a different. This is a lighter blue. So the, over here, it's a little more subtle. There's light back in here, back in between the, the trees. So it's starting to get that, that effect. It's nice. And want so just bringing the light down in between the Right now, it's kind of the color is still kind of one dimensional and the foliage, and I want to want to play with that a little bit more than I've got it. But I am going to run out of time today on this one. A little bit off a little bit more than I could chew. But I'm starting to get that effect, so that's really, really cool. Whoops, I want to get white, white in the center there. those rays. And then I, one other thing I want to want to do before we finish off for today. Okay, a couple a couple things. Little lighter here and there. Is um, I want to get some light on the edges of these couple of these trees because I think that that would be cool. Um, it's really subtle, so we want to use a subtle tool. This is a Giro.
So the trick is to have it be subtle, yet you want it to read, so it's, that's a little dance. Get some of these branches in. I want to open up the sky a little bit in, in between these. And I want to leave some time for some questions too. So I think I'll stop painting. I think it's, you can kind of see where it's headed. It's, it's kind of coming together nicely. But I need to work on knitting the sky and around the, the branches, kind of adding on to the colors. Um, plain, there's the uh, leaves underneath the trees, which I haven't gotten in yet. I would. I would do that with, um, you know, I'd probably bring something like a couple of different colors in here like this. And get that. And then some mark making to suggest that. And then the, the, that same idea of the, the foliage being also in the light, so you need to switch up the switch up the color. But I have to play with that a little bit. Okay, let's let's uh, take some questions now. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a question on the light and in the light and shadow workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, will this workshop help me discover how to make my pastel shadows transparent? Yes. Yes, it will. Yeah. Rather, we don't want them to we want them to be luminous and not not super dense and yeah. Cool. Also, um, can somebody use watercolors in the light and shadow class instead of pastels? Mm. Well, you can always follow along the demonstrations in any media, um, but all the demonstrations are in pastel. So, yeah, you could follow along. We also have some pretty yeah. killer water watercolor yeah. workshops as well. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, so, and this sketch, did you use your blue spruce? I did use blue spruce in this, yeah, I did. I'm trying to uh, find some alternatives and also wean myself away from it, <laughs> but it's a little tricky, yeah. I, I'm working on it, yeah. Yeah, and this is more of a comment uh, Leanne made. Uh, she, she said that you can see that what Marla sees by using the edit photo in your photo app, really amp up the color in your photo. I think she's saying to you know use technology to your advantage. You know you can bring a photo into a yeah. Procreate. You can you can increase the saturation on your photo if you want to. Yeah, play you with can. It. I I think that I think that that's great. I do think that it is good to practice seeing the leanings of a color. So you can see in, for instance, these yellows, some of these are leaning towards green. These is more of a lemon yellow. So it's leaning towards green. Let's get this, this thing down on the color wheel. So the, the you could look at these yellows, so stay in the middle. So these, 
there's yellows that are leaning over towards orange and red, and there's others that are leaning a little more towards green. Like I would say this yellow is, you know, this, this one, let's get a good example, is leaning that way. It's leaning more towards green than it is towards orange. And so practicing that is important. And yeah, you can do that with technology, but um, you really want to embody that, really feel it in your, in your painting. Sure. And um, will you be adding some of the dark flecks in the foreground? Yeah, I just yeah, I just haven't had time, and I'm I it's this is actually this piece is kind of nowhere near done. I need to work on knitting the shapes and uh, defining the shapes and the, the negative shapes in the sky, adding on um, yeah, and it needs a lot more branches and chaos and it needs a lot of stuff. But I think essentially that that the 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 idea of the quality of light is established. And that's what I'm, you know, always hot to do in any painting. I want to like get it like, so, oh yeah, I can see, uh, I see it now. And when I get to that point where I go, oh yeah, I see it now, then, you know, you're pa past the sort of yuck stage, the stage that it feels like not, you, know, you can't discern things. Um, but uh, yeah, this one's, um, it's tricky, but I think it's it's uh, it's, it's going to come together. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, you guys. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Check out the light and shadow sale. A few more days. It's on sale, so um, it's a good one. Lots of lots of good lessons, and we added the lesson. So if you've already purchased it, you can log on to the website, and you can you'll see the extra, the new lesson in there. And um, yeah, so. And uh, really quick, Marlo, um, mm -hmm. will, you, will you finish this off camera, maybe show it for people? Yeah, I can, if I have time to do that this weekend, I will. I might not, I've got some, I've got some other plans. <laughs> I've got plans for some more animals this weekend. I'm really anxious to, I have a nice uh, block of time this weekend to paint, so I'm, but I'll try, I'll try to get it. It'll, it'll probably eventually yeah. get done. Maybe, yeah, maybe sometimes at some point. Uh, sometimes I I do and sometimes I don't. It really depends. Yeah, but I'd like to. You know, this is I, I have a painting in in my hanging in my house that, that this reminds me of, and um, so I, and I really like it. Obviously, it's hanging in my house. I don't have too many of my own pieces hanging there. So, um, uh, yeah, so it's fun. Yep, definitely. All right, everyone, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Okay, bye.